Kraft presents the Great Gildersleeve. Yeah, yeah. Kraft Cheese Company, makers of parquet margin and a complete line of famous quality food products, presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. Kraft brings you the Great Gildersleeve every week at this time, written by John Wheaton and Sam Moore, music by Claude Sweeten. Greg Gildersleeve in just a moment. Good nourishing foods, as you well know, disappear mighty fast from your dealer's shelves these days. And that explains why sometimes he may temporarily be out of delicious parquet margarine that's made by Kraft. Yes, Kraft makes this nutritious, fine-flavored spread for bread. And, of course, Kraft is doing everything possible to keep your dealer supplied. These days, however, so many people prefer parquet margarine, the dealers often find themselves hard put to keep up with the demand. So our advice is, watch your food dealer's refrigerator or his refrigerated display case and buy parquet whenever there's a new supply on hand. Remember, parquet is an excellent energy food and is fortified by Kraft so that every pound contains 9,000 units of vitamin A. And it's such a delicious, satisfying spread for bread. So look for and always ask for parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. the great Gildersleeve. Well, he's broken into the papers again. The Summerfield Indicator of October 26th bears an editorial headed, Watchman, What of the Night? And we may be sure that it's not escaped the attention of the great man himself. So let's drop in there and see how he's taking it. The action of Mayor Terwilliger in removing Shock Morton P. Gildersleeve from office and installing his own cousin, Dan McCarthy, as water commissioner can be attributed to nothing but politics. You said it. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve may not have been perfect, but at least he had one virtue. He kept the water running. You darn right. <laughs> if Mayor Terwilliger has any hope of being reelected on November 7th, he will straightway return Mr. Gildersleeve to office. Hooray! Now they're talking. Hooray for us! Isn't that wonderful, Uncle Mort? I don't like that part there where it says I wasn't perfect. Oh, don't be silly. Nobody's perfect. Now, Marjorie. Bertie, you think that's any way for a girl to talk about her uncle? Oh, Mr. Gilsey, if you was perfect, you'd be up with the angels, which, thank goodness, you ain't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Uncle Mort, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Now, now, my dear. I'm glad they showed up that old Terwilliger, the old fool. I'm glad they finally gave you credit. Uncle Mort, I must say you don't seem very excited. I should think you'd be thrilled. Well, it's gratifying, my dear. Gratifying to have one's humble efforts recognized at last even though the recognition comes too late. Too late? You ask me, it's just in time. In another week, we might have been eating grass. Yeah. <laughs> we were at no time an actual want, my boy. Well, then what was all that you were giving us about we had to cut down? Why am I beating my brains out trying to scrape along on a 15-cent allowance? <laughs> 15 cents? That ain't a living wage. That's not a living wage. You're darn right it's not. <laughs> I was merely taking precautions, Leroy, during the period of my uh, temporary unemployment to guard against a rainy day. Boy, I thought it was here. Uh. <laughs> well, it's gone now. The mayor will have to make a commissioner again, won't he, Uncle Mort? It doesn't seem to have occurred to anyone that I may possibly not be interested in the commissionership. Not interested? Don't tell me you're not going to take it. I have never sought public office, my boy. Are you kidding? <laughs> at any rate, I do not seek it at this time. Oh, Uncle Mort, you ought to take it. Sure you should. Hey, man. What makes you say that, Bertie? I got the milk bill this morning. Oh. <laughs> you think I should take it, do you? You think that being water commissioner is the best your old uncle is capable of, do you? You could do worse, Uncle Mort. You're doing worse right now. <laughs> <laughs> As you grow older, my boy, you will learn that it's best not to leap to conclusions until you have all the facts in your possession. In exactly one hour and 15 minutes, 
Your uncle has an appointment to confer with some of the biggest executives in the country. Yikes! What do they want to confer with you for? Yeah. Is that so strange, my boy? Oh, no, but I wondered why you had your best tie on. Yeah. How do I look, my dear? Like an executive? Like a million dollars. But, uh, who are you going to see, Uncle Moore? Well, I wouldn't want this to get beyond these walls, my dear. But I saw Nelson Humpstone yesterday out at the factory. He's back from Detroit? And not only that, he's brought with him some of the big shots from International Bolt and Screw. Oh, um... <laughs> you, uh, think they might want to talk to you about a job? Well, they certainly don't want to run me for president. <laughs> my hat, my dear. Leroy, my walking stick. Your walking stick? You heard me. Well, you haven't used that in years, huh? The occasion for it has not arisen. I don't see what you want to use it now for. Because, my boy, I'm meeting these men for the first time. And first impressions are very important. Well, that's just what I mean. Leroy, get the walking stick. Well, hello, Mr. Galaxy. <laughs> hello, Peavy. Have you got a decent cigar in this so-called drugstore? Well, I have your regular brand, Mr. Galaxy. <laughs> You haven't answered my question. I want the most expensive cigar you've got, Peavy. Well, let me see. I've got these at 25 cents, please. <laughs> Sounds expensive. Is that the best you can do, 25 cents? Well, it could raise the price a little. <laughs> Anything to accommodate a customer. It's not just the price, Peavy. I want a cigar that's not just a cigar. One that'll make an impression, if you know what I mean. <laughs> You're not thinking of an exploding cigar, are you? <laughs> No, no. And I'm a bit of a hurry, too, Peavy. Well, now, uh, here's a cigar that has a certain distinction. Well, let's see it. The Salome Perfecto. You see, it has a picture of the dancing girl on the band there. Has a certain feel to some people. <laughs> no salamis, Peavy. Look. What I want is a cigar that I can offer to a big, important executive without being ashamed of it. Oh, oh well, you want the Garcia Profundo. Oh, do I? Yes. <laughs> You see, it says right here on the box, the cigar of distinction for distinguished men. That's for me. I'll take four. Well, you must be expecting to meet a lot of distinguished men today. I am, Peavy. I am. Uh, anybody I know? Uh, I'm not saying. Well, that's yeah. I'll uh, give you a little hint, though, Peavy. A certain manager of a certain manufacturing concern here in this town has just returned from Detroit with certain executives to discuss uh, filling a certain job. They have their eye on a certain man. You get it? Yours truly. <laughs> oh, oh. Sorry, I can't tell you any more, Peavy. But I wouldn't want this to get around. You know what the competition for these big jobs is like. Dog eat dog. Mm -hmm. Dog eat humpstone. <laughs> what? How did you find out about humpstone? Well, you almost broke up my phone booth last week trying to get in touch with him, if you remember. Oh, yes. That. Well, I'm due over at the plant there in half an hour to meet some of the big shots. Confidentially, Humpstone tells me I've got the inside track. That's so? The inside track must be a little crowded. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, Frank Jessup was in here this morning. You know him. Jessup? Oh, yeah, he has the Buick Agency over on State Street. He had the Buick Agency. Uh, he's out there at the plant right now. He is? Yeah, and then there's Walter Cornbloom. I hear he's been... Cornbloom? Oh, my goodness. It must be all over town. I'd better get over there. Not Mr. Gildersleeve, your cigars. Cigars. Oh, yeah. Let me have them, Peavy. I hope they do the trick. Well, they ought to. At a quarter apiece. If it's any comfort to you, Jessup bought the two for 15 centers. Oh, great. I'll let him beat me to the draw, then I'll move in with the big gun. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Mr. Humpstone, it's me. <laughs> come in, come in. Oh, uh, thanks. Well, uh, here I am. You're early, Gildersleeve. Better early than late, I always say. Yes, sir. Punctuality, very important in business. Uh, just put your hat on the file there. Uh, it won't be in the way. No, not at all. Uh, have a chair. Uh, thanks. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve? Well, Mr. Humpstone? <laughs> Today should tell the story, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, have a cigar. Oh, no, thank you. As a matter of fact, uh, just a tip. We discourage smoking here at the plant. Oh? Yes, you see, J.G. doesn't smoke himself. And he doesn't like to see any of the men smoke either. J.G. Our executive vice president. You'll meet him in just a few minutes. Oh, yes. Well, I never smoke on the job myself. Just happen to have these things with me, so 
I thought if anybody could use them, I... Uh, maybe I'd better get rid of them before we... No, just put them out of sight. J.G. is a funny duck. You have to know just how to handle him. Oh, how's that? Oh, you will catch on. Now, A.K. is different. A.K. has a great sense of humor. <laughs> Only you never know when he's kidding. Oh, how do you find out? You'll find out. <laughs> it takes a little time, but uh, for now, just take your cue from me. When uh, I laugh, you laugh. <laughs> now there's nothing to be nervous about Oh, I'm not nervous <laughs> Not me um, I understand, though, that you've been interviewing a number of men for this position Well, naturally, we want to cover all the possibilities But don't worry, you're still in the lead Well, that's fine Yes, you see, this position calls for some knowledge of hydraulics Hydraulics? Yes and with your experience in the water department, we Oh, thought... yes, I ran into plenty of those hydraulics down there at the water department. Oh, plenty. Yes, yes Miss Pickens? J.G. will see you now. Well, J.G.'s ahead of schedule. How did that happen? He's been cutting his interviews short. Uh-oh. In a bad mood today? Brother. <laughs> After you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, no. <clears throat> oh, no. <laughs> After you. <laughs> Uncle Mort, do you think he was impressed or not? I tell you, Marjorie, I have no idea. The man just sat there like a bump on a log, didn't say anything, didn't ask any questions, just stared at me like an idiot. Humpstone did all the talking. I don't think the man is all there. Tell me something, Uncle. What does this job pay? I don't know. Besides, it's none of your business. Leroy, can't you see Uncle Mort's upset? Well, as long as he was there, I don't see why he couldn't ask. Ye God, that was no time to bring up money. That's not the way these things are done, Leroy. I imagine it pays a good four or five thousand dollars. I don't care what it pays. I don't think I want the darn job anyway. How do I have to work for an old fool like that? Sat there like a wooden Indian. Telephone. Yeah, I'll take it. Hello? Humpstone? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks, Humpy. Yeah. What is it? What do you know, kids? Humpstone ran into J.G. in the washroom, and he likes the cut of my jib. Yeah, that's what he said. He likes the cut of my jib. You mean he likes you? Likes me. I'm in, kids. I'm practically in. Hurry up. He's in the chair. Oh, wonderful. Why, George, that J.G. is a smart hombre. He doesn't say much, but you know, all the time he sat there looking at me, I had the feeling he could see right through me. <laughs> Greg Gildersleeve will be with us again in just a few seconds. And that's the time we're going to use for some important reminders about parquet margarine, a nutritious spread for America's bread. You see, during the next few weeks on this program, you'll be hearing about other craft quality food products. So we'd like to remind you briefly of the important way parquet margarine contributes to good family nutrition. First, there's the splendid food energy parquet provides so economically. And second... Kraft guarantees that every single pound of parquet margarine contains 9,000 units of important vitamin A. And they're both needed every day for good family nutrition. Of course, you should remember, too, parquet's fresh, delicate flavor and how good it tastes on bread, toast, rolls, and waffles. Yes, Kraft makes this delicious, nourishing spread for America's bread. So remember always to ask for parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. get back to the great Gildersleeve. Full of executive fire, he spent the afternoon in his study, straightening out his papers, throwing away unpaid bills, and spinning around in his desk chair. Now, he and his family have enjoyed an early supper so that Bertie can attend a war chest meeting, and Gildersleeve is topping it off with a cigar. Sam, can we go to the movies? Not me, Leroy. You and Marge, we can go if you want to. Oh, boy, come on, Marge. Why can't you go, Uncle Mort? I'm going to stay home and do a little planning tonight. Think up some new ideas for the factory. Oh, come on to the movies, Unc. Suppose you think of something and then you don't get the job. All that thinking would be wasted. No thinking is ever wasted, my boy. Are you kidding? Yesterday I learned my geography cold and the teacher didn't even call on me. Had my hand up the whole time. Well, maybe she smelled a rat, Leroy. Learn your lesson again tomorrow and keep your hands in your pockets. Hey, you might have 
something there. <laughs> Always work for me. And don't worry about me getting this job. The only question is, when do I start work? Uh-oh. See you it is, Leroy. Oh, Kim. <laughs> that darn kid, Marjorie, isn't so different from the kid I was, you know. Really, Uncle Mort? Oh, I just can't believe you were ever as terrible as Leroy. Oh, yes, I was. Well, well, the majesty of the law. Good evening, Trot Morton. Marjorie. Hello, Judge. Have a chair, Judge. Thank you. I <clears throat> am the bearer of an important message for you, Gilly. Yeah? By the way, I'm not holding up your supper, am I? No, Judge. We've already had it. Oh. Those are the breaks, kid. <laughs> <laughs> that will do, Leroy. <laughs> What's the important message, Horace? It's from Mayor Williger. He wants you to accept the water commissioner's portfolio again. Horace, you can tell the mayor to take the portfolio and blow soap bubbles through it. <laughs> but, Gildy, this is the job you wanted. Best job you ever had. Got a better one now, Judge. You're looking at the man who's going to be Nelson Humpstone's new assistant at International Bolt and Screw. Or possibly his associate. Well, when did this happen? Went out and saw him this morning. Nothing to it. Is it really sewed up, Gildy? Oh, uh, it's in the bag, Horace. Just a few details to be settled. Yeah, it's all settled except the money. Leroy, there's at least four or five thousand a year in it, Judge. But have you really got it? How did they ever come to pick you? Well, who else in this town knows anything about hydraulics? What do you know about hydraulics? Well, I bet I could learn all about it in ten minutes. <laughs> By George, I think I'll go down to the public library right now. They must have a book. Dozens of them. I'm going to do it. I'll glance through a few of these books. When I see those fellows tomorrow, I'll know more about hydraulics than old John W. Hydraulics himself. <laughs> yeah, I wonder why it is that all libraries smell the same. Books, I suppose. People, too. Oh, well. Uh, pardon me, I'd like a book on... We don't allow smoking in here. Oh, pardon me. Uh, you got an ashtray? Well, <laughs> hardly. Oh, uh, wastebasket? Oh, I see one. Don't move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a good shot, wasn't it? That might start a fire. Oh, no, it was out. Uh, have you got a book on hydraulics? Oh, yes. Elementary or advanced? Well, I'm not sure. Just what are hydraulics? <laughs> hydraulics is the science of water pressure and so on. What? Well, then I know all about it. Water. Well. Yeah. <laughs> Certainly. Give me the advanced book, please, miss. Mrs. Uh, oh, pardon me. I'll get it for you. Uh, Mrs. <laughs> I'll bet Mr. something. Yeah, I'll bet he is. I'll bet he wears a nightcap and reads the Atlantic Monthly in bed. Do you wish to take the book out or read it here? Oh, I'll just glance through it here. Can I sit any place I please? Oh, yes. Oh, thank you, Mrs. <laughs> the laws of hydromechanics. Oh, that sounds good. Would you mind keeping your feet on your own side of the table? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, the general properties of fluids are as follows. Do you mind reading to yourself? Oh, I... Uh, or don't you know how? I'm just as good a reader as you are. Gee, I'm surrounded. <laughs> how can anybody read when it's so darn quiet? Is this chair taken? No. Oh, Eve, Eve Goodwin. Morton, I didn't see you. <laughs> oh, you have to be quiet in here, Eve. I know. Well, well, imagine meeting you here. I'm the one who should be surprised. It's awfully nice to see you. Oh, well, nice to see you, too. It's been months. Would you mind conducting this reunion somewhere else? <laughs> How would you like a punch in the nose, mister? Oh, so you're a rowdy, too. Mm. <laughs> Morton, you'll be thrown out. Thrown out? Not by that bookworm, I won't. Come on, let's take a walk, Eve. I want to talk to you. But I just got here. It's all right, so did I. Come on, you can read any time. Uh, 
goodbye, George. Good to get out of there. Stuffy. Yes, it is. How on earth did you happen to be here? Well, I was going to do a little scientific reading, Eve. Hydraulics. But I found I knew all about it. <laughs> you haven't changed, have you, Throckmorton? Oh, lost a little weight. Uh, uh, how's your mother? Well, she's all right. She's not living with me anymore, you know. Oh, you don't say. <laughs> no, she went to live with my sister in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Oh, I love Pennsylvania. <laughs> yeah, you must miss her a great deal. <laughs> Fine woman. Well, I did miss her at first. I've been quite lonesome, Throckmorton. Uh, I've been lonesome too, Eve. Oh, a man never needs to be lonesome. But a girl, a girl has to spend her evenings in the library. Well, we ought to see more of each other, Eve. We used to have a lot of fun. Yes, we did. I don't see why we couldn't have that same kind of fun all over again. Hmm? We're not engaged now, Throckmorton. Well, we had plenty of fun before we were engaged, Eve. (laughs) Now, Throckmorton, we we haven't seen each other in quite a while. Oh, take it a little easy, huh? (laughs) Take it very easy. I um, saw the editorial in the paper this morning. I was so proud of you. Oh, that. Yeah, Terwilliger wants me back. Sent Judge Hooker crawling over to see me. Begging me to come back. That's very flattering. Uh, how did you happen to leave the water department? To Williger Fry, I resigned. <laughs> uh, we had a difference of opinion on policy. It was him or me, so I quit. I, Throckmorton. It was him or I, so I... He. He. I. Uh. <laughs> Certainly seems like the old days, Eve. <laughs> I can't help correcting you, Throckmorton. I'm always so surprised when you make a mistake. Um, are you going back as water commissioner? Nope. Got something much better, Eve. Private industry. Oh, really? What is it? A fellow named Nelson Humpstone runs the war plant here. Yeah, it's a subsidiary of International Bolt and Screw. Humpy wants me as his assistant. Or possibly his associate. Hmm, sounds interesting. How did you uh, meet this Mr. Humpstone? Uh, through Leela Ransom. She knows him pretty well. Oh. Uh... Oh, uh, <laughs> nothing between them or anything like that, of course. I mean, Leela arranged this meeting as a favor to me. I see. Yeah, uh, Leela would do just about anything for me. I'm sure she would. Uh, Throckmorton, are you sure you're being wise to go back to private business? Well, why, certainly. It's a good job, Eve. Fine opportunity. Why not? Well, I thought when I read that editorial this morning... I thought, how much you have to give the people, the people of our city. All I ever give them is water, Eve. (laughs) What are you getting at? You came awfully close to being nominated for mayor last June. I don't want to run for mayor again. Well, something bigger then. You have great capacity for leadership, Throckmorton. Oh, you think so? I've always thought so. Well, maybe I could become a big man in business, Eve. I imagine this job with Humpstone would pay four or five thousand a year. Is that so much more than the water department pays? Well, no, but the future... Well, money isn't everything. You could be a great public figure. Your name could be known to thousands of people. Maybe millions. Millions. Well, I kind of like that. On the other hand, that's kind of a gamble. (laughs) Well, of course, if you never want to take a chance. Well, I... Hey, we're here already. Yes. Good night, Throckmorton. Oh, Eve, I've hardly seen you. Aren't you going to ask me in? I don't believe so. You've apparently lost something that was quite important to me, Throckmorton. Lost something? What have I lost? Your youth. <laughs> the Throckmorton I knew had a marvelous spirit of youthfulness, of daring, of faith in himself. He had courage and vigor. He wasn't afraid to take a chance. Well, I'm not afraid to take a chance, Eve. I've still got uh, all those things. How can I tell? You'll see. I'll show you. Eve, let me come in for just a few minutes. Well, Throckmorton, I... Just a little take-a-take for old time's sake. (laughs) All right. For old time's sake.
Daniel McCarthy, water commissioner. <laughs> we'll soon change that. <laughs> oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, I'm so glad you're back. Oh, I could kiss you. <laughs> uh, not this morning, Miss. <laughs> Is uh, McWatch's name here? Uh, Mr. McCarthy? Yes, he's in your office. He's got the desk all cleaned out. He's ready to go. Shall I announce you? No, let him enjoy himself a little longer. <laughs> oh, well. Hi, George. Same old office. Same old water cooler. Same old hat. That half rack is a disgrace. <laughs> is this uh, McCarthy's hat? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. Gildersleeve. You look so funny. Oh, really? <laughs> Must have a head like a peanut, that guy. <laughs> well, uh, are you uh, Gildersleeve? <laughs> hey, what are you doing with my hat? Oh, oh, well, I... I thought it was one of mine when I was younger, before inflation set in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I, I thought I'd left it in here. Oh. Well, would you care to step into my office for a moment, take care of the formalities? Oh, yes, yes, thank you. Yes. Well, I guess there's not much to say. The books are up to date. You can have them audited as of today if you want to. Now, here's the combination to the safe. Oh, thank you. Key to the office, key to the desk, key to the, uh, down the hall. <laughs> Thank you, McCartney. You're welcome. I guess that's everything. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, <clears throat> what are all those papers on the desk? Complaints. Complaints? Complaints. <laughs> well. Well, oh, and I hope you'll be able to find, uh, I mean, I hope you'll soon be able to announce your new connection. You mean you hope I'll get a job? Well, yes. Don't worry about me, Gildersleeve. I've got a better job than you'll ever get. You? Ha! <laughs> yep. I B and S, assistant to Nelson Humstone, ten thousand dollars a year. Ten thousand. Ten thousand dollars for a tape to tape. When am I going to learn? <laughs> you want breakfast in the morning? Uh, seven o'clock, Bertie. Seven o'clock? Seven sharp. Starting working in tomorrow. Got to be up with the birds. Down there early, on my toes. In there, punching right from the start. Yes, sir. Uh, make it 7.30. Do I hear eight? Eight it is, Bertie. Yeah. <laughs> Good night, Bertie. Good night, everybody. <laughs> on this program was directed by Claude Sweet. And this is Ken Carpenter speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. Kraft invites you to listen in again next week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. how to bring out hidden flavors in meat, add new zest to salads, create new interest in vegetable, egg, and cheese dishes. It's easy as can be. Simply add an extra flavor tang to foods with Kraft Salad Mustard. This zestful golden salad mustard is prepared to Kraft's own special recipe. Blends with luscious smoothness and the keen-tasting cream sauces for hot-cooked vegetables, adds delicious flavor to deviled eggs, puts an extra tempting tang into French salad dressings, gravies, pickle relishes, and barbecue sauce. Be sure to try this craft quality salad mustard soon. It's so appetizing in so many tempting ways. Also, be sure to pick up a jar of that sharper, horseradish-flavored mustard, Kraft Mustard with nippy horseradish added. Your dealer has them both. Kraft horseradish mustard and tangy golden Kraft salad mustard. <laughs>